Hey, this is Shane Basinette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to practice identifying the different types of angles that are created by a transversal intersecting a pair of parallel lines. Specifically, we are going to look at corresponding angles, we are going to look at same side interior angles, as well as same side exterior angles, and we're also going to look at alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with this set of parallel lines. And we're going to take these lines and we are going to cross those lines with a transversal. A transversal really just is a line that crosses two or more lines. The lines don't have to be parallel, but we are going to look at the specific example of a transversal crossing parallel lines. Now, something that we should notice about a transversal crossing a set of parallel lines is that we have a total of eight different angles. And if we take a look at these four angles above here, shaded in blue, orange, yellow, and red, they are going to be congruent to these angles down here. Now, we would say that the blue goes with this blue, we would say this orange goes with this orange, the red goes to red, and the yellow goes with yellow. And these angles that match up are called corresponding angles. We would say that angle A corresponds to angle E. We would say that angle D corresponds to angle H. Angle C corresponds to G. And angle B corresponds to F. And all corresponding angles are congruent to each other, meaning they have an identical angle measure. All right, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at the different regions that are created by a transversal crossing over a set of parallel lines. And we're going to start by taking a look at the region shaded in yellow. This region is called the interior region because it is located in the middle of our set of parallel lines. So when we talk about interior angles, we are talking about angles that are located in the middle of our parallel lines. So angles C, B, H, and E are all considered interior angles. And everything that is located in the blue are considered exterior angles, which are angles A, D, G, and F. So when we talk about interior and exterior angles, we are always talking in reference to our set of parallel lines. Are they inside the parallel lines or are they located on the outside of our parallel lines? Now we have to look at positions relative to our transversal. And these relative positions are called same side or alternate side. Now if we take a look at everything that's located in yellow, all of those angles are on one side of our transversal. We should see that angles A, B, E, and F are all somewhere above our transversal. And we would also say that D, C, H and G are on one side of this line, so all of these angles together would be considered same side angles, meaning they are on the same side of our transversal. Now, what is an alternate angle? Well, let's take a look at angle A and angle G. We would say that they are alternate angles because one of them is located in the shaded region and one of them is not located in the shaded region. So they would be considered as being located on alternate sides of our transversal. We could also say angles D and F are alternate angles. We could say that angles H and A are alternate angles. All right, now that we know the difference between interior and exterior angles and same side versus alternate side angles, we're gonna merge these concepts together to identify different types of angles. Let's take a look at angles A and F. We can see that A and F are both located on the same side of this transversal. And we would also say that they are located on the outside of our parallel lines. So because these angles are on the same side of our transversal and they are on the outside of our parallel lines, we would identify angles A and F as being same side exterior angles because they're on the same side of our transversal and they are on the exterior of our parallel lines. Now, one thing that we should note about same side exterior angles is that if we were to take those two angles and combine them together, they would have an angle sum of 180 degrees, 
which is exactly half of a circle. We know that a complete circle is comprised of 360 degrees, therefore half of a circle would have an angle measure of 180 degrees. If we take a look at angles D and G, we would also consider those same side exterior angles because they're both on the same side of our transversal and they are both located on the exterior of our parallel lines. Angles D and G also have an angle sum of 180 degrees. So anytime you have same side exterior angles, when dealing specifically with a transversal going through a set of parallel lines, the angle sum will always be 180 degrees. Now with this example, angles D and G are both located on the same side of our transversal. Let's see what would happen when the angles are located on opposite sides of our transversal, or alternate sides. So we have angles A and G. They're both in the exterior portion of our diagram, but note that one is located above our transversal and angle G is located below our transversal. We would say angles A and G are on alternate sides of our transversal, yet they are still located outside of our parallel lines or in the exterior region. So if we combine these concepts, we would identify angles A and G as being alternate exterior angles. Now with any pair of alternate exterior angles, we would say that the angle measure is congruent. So we can make a statement that angle A is congruent to angle G. We can take a look at angles D and F, and we can also identify them as being alternate exterior angles. They are on alternate sides of our transversal, yet they are located on the outside of our parallel lines or in the exterior of our parallel lines. All right, now so far we've looked at examples of exterior angles. We looked at same side exterior and alternate side exterior. Now let's take a look at interior angles. Angles C and H are both located on the same side of our transversal and they are located on the interior of our parallel lines. So we would combine those regions to say that these angles are same side interior angles. Now with any set of same side interior angles, when it comes to parallel lines, we would say that they have an angle sum of 180 degrees. Another set of same side interior angles would be angles B and E. They are also on the same side of our transversal, and they are also located on the interior of our parallel lines, and they also have an angle sum of 180 degrees. Now, if we take a look at angles B and H, we can see that they are on alternate sides of our transversal, yet located inside the parallel lines or interior region. So we would identify angles B and H as being alternate interior angles. And any pair of alternate interior angles will be congruent to each other. So angles B and H have identical angle measures. And another set of alternate interior angles would be angle C and E. Angle C and E would have identical angle measures, and they're both located on the inside of our parallel lines, making them interior angles, and they're on alternate sides of our transversal. So angles C and E are also alternate interior angles. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this map tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.